Our houses are such unwieldy property that we are often imprisoned rather than housed by them. Australian property prices are in the news again, have they ever not been? We Australians love hearing about the latest property news, whether that's because we're a prospective buyer waiting for a dip in the market, or one of the more than 2 million property investors who are hoping for the complete opposite. There's an internal ideological struggle in Australia between those who already own a house, or increasingly houses, and those who don't. Sadly, I fit into the latter. Looking at recent news headlines, Western Australian property market remains bleak. Australian house prices keep rising, but former RBA boss Ian McFarlane can't see a crash coming. Bleak prospects for new tenants moving to Canberra, the city with Australia's highest rent. Looking at how capital city property prices have performed over the last 15 years, we can see that the Perth market is the worst performer having been in a continual decline since around 2014. It's no secret that Western Australia's economy hasn't been doing very well since the end of the mining boom, and continues to struggle with fairly high unemployment. RiskWise Property Research CEO Doran Peleg commented, The housing market, particularly units, has experienced continued weakness in recent years. According to CoreLogic, house and unit prices in Perth have declined by 8.6% and 9% in the past year, respectively. Western Australia is still in a long transition process from a mining-oriented economy, and while unemployment has slightly improved from 6.1% in April to 5.7% in October, October, it is still projected to deliver low economic growth, a soft job market, and low population growth. Darwin is the next worst performer, with prices having retreated heavily over the last five years. Northern Territory real estate prices remain in limbo, as experts see path to Territory's economic recovery. Unfortunately for the top end, the population is in a state of decline, with no projected growth in the foreseeable future. Less population means more houses on the market, which means falling prices. Brisbane showed a little bit of a rebound over the last quarter, but nothing to write home about. Queensland property advisors have typically been telling investors to practice restrained optimism, whatever that means. I guess it means, go ahead and buy, but don't blame us if the market turns south. Brisbane City Council have recently implemented a townhouse ban in established neighbourhoods under the guise of saving the backyard and preserving the Brisbane lifestyle. Critics say that it's just another way to keep the housing market inflated. Less townhouses results in lower density suburbs, compounding the already emerging housing shortage. A housing shortage results in higher prices. Adelaide prices seem to have flatlined and are seemingly on the decline, but news reports say otherwise. South Australian property prices reach bottom, but modest growth projected. This seems to go against some of the core statistics like unemployment, which, depending on which part of the state you live in, are very high. Doran Peleg commented, while the labour market has improved in the past couple of years, the effective unemployment rate in South Australia is still above 9%, and the employment market is still soft. This has a strong connection with low population growth, only 0.8% per annum, and therefore low demand for dwellings. Long-term economic growth will be a slow process, and with a soft labour market, no significant changes to demand are expected in the short to medium term, with less popular areas experiencing modest growth growth only. The nation's capital, Canberra, is following a similar trend to Adelaide. Property prices have kind of flatlined, but Canberrans are facing a different kind of issue. Their rental market is becoming completely unaffordable. Canberra now has the highest median rent for houses than any other capital city. Rents in the ACT are now rising three times as quickly as the national average. Typically in January, thousands of public servants, military personnel, and academics move to the capital to start new jobs. Unfortunately for them, they're going to have to pay extortionate rents. Hobart prices are continuing to head upwards. Sydney prices, after a two-year decline, are also heading back up, along with Melbourne, who are also following a similar trend. Thanks to these three markets – well, mainly Sydney and Melbourne – capital city average property prices are on the rise. But are we just getting ourselves into another bubble? Experts say that this can't go on, and probably won't. 
According to Real Estate Group Domain, property prices will continue to rise during the first half of 2020, but will peter out mid-year. Remember, Domain are in the business of selling property, so they wouldn't be reporting this unless there were some real concerns. AMP Capital Chief Economist Shane Oliver explained why the two main markets of Sydney and Melbourne will probably moderate in the latter half of the year. That's simply because affordability will become an issue again. Melbourne could hit record highs February or March, and Sydney could be in May. It's quite easy. It'll hit all-time highs again. It's not that far away, if you continue to grow at the current pace. We may even see a renewed tightening by APRA if credit growth continues to pick up. Fraser's Property Residential Executive General Manager Cameron Leggett also commented, I do think we'll see continued price growth in the first half, but I think the health of the broader economy and what plays out at an international level will have an impact. If there's any shock to the broader economy, it'll impact buyer confidence. It's obviously been the toughest market we've been operating in in the last two to three year period. Former RBA Governor Ian McFarlane spoke on the future of the Australian housing market. I think a fundamental shift in the relative price of housing has occurred over the last 30 or 40 years. I don't think it's ever going to go back to where it was. I don't think it can continue to go up as fast as it has over that period. I think we've reached the limits of the household sector's capacity to service mortgages. Speaking on whether housing is a good investment, he said, If you're lucky enough to buy right at the bottom and sell at the top, yes, you will make money, but that's only a minority of people who do that. The majority, I think, either make not much more money than they would have in the bank, or in many cases, they lose money. He also delivered a very clear message to those who are profiting from rising property values. He said, You're making yourself richer at the expense of your children. Anyway, that's the current state of the Australian property market. Ultimately, it depends on which city you are in. Perth and Darwin are struggling. Melbourne and Sydney are booming. But how long can it go on for? Is Australian property a bad investment? For me, I say yes. Not just because it could potentially lose you money, but because it's directly hurting other people's ability to buy a much-needed home. I don't want my children growing up struggling to afford a house. I think it's about time that we turn down the greed in Australia and focus on people for once. <laughs>